Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to GBTV Live Just In. I am your hostess, Dominique, and I have some returning guests with me here today, and they're going to go over some new items that we have going here at the Gail Borden Library. Um, I have Cindy from Kids Space, and I've also got our Division Chief of Public Services, Margaret, as well as we have Tracy. So all of my three wonderful guests have came back to share with you all some wonderful things that we have added to our collection. And we're going to start off in Kids Space with Cindy, and she looks like a familiar character. Hi, Cindy, how are you? I'm doing great. I have to, I have to give you a roar. Oh my gosh. All right. What you got going in Kids Space? Well, I am so excited to share with you. It is time for summer reading, boys and girls. We need everyone to come into the library. But first, I would like you to join us for our summer reading kickoff on June 3rd from three to five. You can come and join us for this really fun program where you can make a tornado. There's going to be a balloon artist there. So please come in and help us kick off summer reading. What is summer reading all about? We're going to follow the yellow brick road to read this summer, boys and girls. We are going to read and we're gonna follow the yellow brick road and you can pick up this book log in the library and you can also get it online. You could put the Beanstack. Beanstack is where it's at. Please put Beanstack on your phone and uh, use it as an app. We have so many more activities you can do because you, if you wanna do this paper log, you can. But if you do Beanstack, there is so much more to do. You can win prizes, so many prizes, 3D pens, an American Girl doll all kinds of fun things. But how do you get prizes? Well, you have to read. So I wanna share with you some fun new books that we had just got in. The first book I want to share with you is called Una and the Shark. Ooh, Una is a mermaid and she is very good at making friends, but until she meets Stanley the Shark. Well, things don't go as exactly as planned but I wanna let you know there is a happy ending. Mermaid and Stanley will become friends. Now I have another book and it's time for summer, isn't it? And it's time to get outside and enjoy nature. So I would like you to come and check this book out. This one's called, How Do You Say Hello to a Worm? Ooh, I wanna know how to do that. So if you want to know how to say hello to a worm, you could check out this wonderful book. It's an introduction to nature for little ones. It is an invitation to go out and explore the great outdoors. Well, please come to the library and sign up for summer reading. Explore all our great activities. Wonderful. Thank you, Cindy, for sharing that. So once again, or just in case uh, we have some new viewers, in order to get a copy of those books that Cindy just mentioned about, um, you can visit our website. We're also going to put in a link in the comments below of this video, and um, you'll be able to put a reservation on the books, and you get to pick a location. So if the main library isn't closed, but our Reiko branch, or maybe our South Elgin branch is um is more convenient for you, you're more than welcome to select one of those locations and pay our other um, branch locations a visit to say hi. And also some um, really huge ruby slippers um, are there. And then the Wizard of Oz exhibit is here at the main library as well. So, and that's Cindy, who is our cowardly lion um, for our today's episode. So that is tying into our exhibit. Um, so wonderful. Thank you once again, Cindy from Kids Space. So we're going to go ahead and take it over to our next guest, and that is Margaret. She's going to share with us some new three titles in our adult collection, correct? Yes, that's right, right. Dominique. Okay, take it away. Well, and I just want to reiterate, as Cindy said, summer reading is not just for kids. We have a whole program for adults for summer reading where they can also win prizes just um, for reading. I really like to use my um, Beanstack app on my phone. I downloaded that. And it's really a one-stop shop where I can keep track of my whole family and all their reading just right in the app. So it's, it's wonderful to have on me this Beanstack app. And you can find that on our website as well. Um, but what I'm doing right now, Dominique, I am trying to get ready for summer, getting that kind of summer read spirit. Okay. So I wanted to find a good book that just seems like a 
fun summer read. This one is called Book Lovers by Emily Henry. It just came out May 3rd, and it just seems like a fun summer read that I just want to open up while I'm on vacation, lounging in a beach chair somewhere warm and fabulous. Doesn't that sound good? It does sound good. <laughs> Especially today, Everything. it's a little chilly. Yes. So Emily Henry, she previously wrote bestsellers called Beach Read and People We Meet on Vacation. So in this book, we meet Nora Stevens, pure city gal and cutthroat literary agent. Uh, Nora likes to land enormous deals on romance books for her clients. But since Nora has read so many meet cute romances, she has no need to become that cliched storybook heroine in her own life. But her sister convinces her to go on a sister trip to Sunshine Falls, North Carolina. Libby, the sister, is convinced that Nora needs to become the main character in her own life. But instead of meeting that typical that stereotypical rom-com small town hero, Nora keeps running into Charlie Lastra, a brooding book editor from back in the city. This would be a fun meet cute, except they've met several times before and it's never been cute. So we will just have to read to the end to see what happens in this anti-rom-com rom-com. All right. That sounds cool. That sounds amazing. So what else you got? Oh, this one you might recognize the author. This just came out May 10th. It's called The Lioness by Chris Bojalian. It is a historical thriller set in Tanzania in 1964. A-list actress Katie Barlow and her new husband had brought several of their elite Hollywood friends to the Serengeti on a posh safari to celebrate their honeymoon. Of course, this glamorous crew is expecting to be sipping chilled gin and tonics while lounging on the Serengeti, watching picturesque herds of zebra galloping across the plain. But what they don't expect is a kidnapping gone wrong and a team of Russian mercenaries forcing the group away at gunpoint and stashing them in abandoned huts somewhere in the desert. Will they be rescued? How will they make it out of this alive? Mm, I don't know. That's, that sounds really interesting. <laughs> You're intrigued? I am very intrigued. <laughs> of course, Chris oh, wow. Jalen is a best-selling author of 23 other books. Um, including Hour of the Witch, Midwives, The Flight Attendant, which is a, currently a TV series. And I really think this one is going to climb the bestseller charts as well. And so, that one's on my list. Add that sure. one to your list. I, I knew you would like that one, yeah. Dominique. I had a feeling. I picked that one for you, Dominique. Oh, good. <laughs> Love it. Okay. okay. Now this next one. I just want you to stay with me on this one. It, it might sound a little strange, but stay with me, okay? Gotcha. This is a debut novel. It's called Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. It just came out May 3rd. Okay, so the first chapter of this book is told from the point of view of an octopus, right? Okay, okay, no, it's good. It's good though, you'll get sucked right in from the first few words in this book, I'm telling you. So this octopus, he's a giant Pacific octopus and his name is Marcellus. He is a resident at the Seoul Bay Aquarium, but this is not just the story about Marcellus. We also meet Tova Sullivan. After her husband died, she began working late shift at the aquarium, cleaning up, mopping the floors, Tova likes to keep busy because it helps her cope since her 18-year-old son mysteriously vanished over 30 years ago. Tova becomes acquainted with Marcellus, and uh, Marcellus himself is quite the character. He would never dream of lifting a tentacle for any of his human captors. 
but he does form a remarkable bond with Tova and he's super smart and he believes that he figured out what happened the night Tova's son disappeared. Now he has to use every trick he can muster to reveal the truth to Tova before it's too late. Okay, so I know I'm not describing this probably as good as I could, but really, if you just pick it up and you start reading, it draws you in. It has uh, amazing themes of friendship, loneliness, and hope. It is actually one of the um, Jenna book club picks from the Today Show, and it's already climbing up the bestseller charts. It's got holds, I noticed, piling up on it right now. A lot of good buzz around it. I mean, I really think you can't go wrong with a giant Pacific octopus as a main character, but, you know, really, I, I highly recommend this one. Okay, we're going to trust you on that one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'll add it to my list. <laughs> I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. So everyone else as well. We'll also comment below on a link with those um, three books, uh, fantastic books that Margaret shared with us. So thank you, Margaret, for taking the time to share all of that information. Um, and then now we're going to go into movies with Tracy from Information Services. So Tracy, what three new movies that we have in our collections on right about now? Well, before I get started, first, I want to say, Margaret, I am intrigued. I trust you implicitly. So I am also adding this interesting title to my hold list. Thank you. Okay, movie watchers, let's get into it. Uh, first, we're going to talk about Turning Red, which is a new spring 2022 creation by Pixar Studios. So Turning Red is the story of Mei Lin Lee a dorky but adorably confident 13-year-old who's torn between staying her mother as a dutiful daughter and the excitement and the chaos of adolescence. May's self-confidence gets rattled when her entrance into this new life chapter is marked by her turning into a giant red panda anytime she gets angry or excited or emotional, the hallmarks of adolescence and puberty. So the film explores themes of adolescence and understanding and honoring family heritage in a different cultural landscape, and ultimately how all these things kind of swirl together and play out within a greater archetype of the mother-daughter relationship. So some parents found turning red and these themes a little uncomfortable, but the movie seeks to ease and normalize the events of a girl's transition from her childhood into her teen experience. And there are a lot of good websites out there like imdb.com, which stands for Internet Movie Database, where parents can go and get a good understanding of movie content so that viewers, especially parents of younger kids, aren't caught off guard by sensitive themes or questions that might arise during the movie. So older kids and preteens watching Turning Red will likely enjoy it. It's animated, it's fun, it's colorful, and it can invite opportunity for good conversation when families watch together. And we, our family watched it. I have a 13 year old and yeah. it's, it's hilarious why as we're watching it. And the main character is so connected to my 13 year old. So I think it's kind of relatable. And then just looking at the friends of this main character, I'm like, oh my God, they look just like your friends. And it just right. looks so, it's just so funny to see how a 13 can be a little interesting, you know, age or, you know, but it was funny. I loved the film. Our family loved it. So I agree with you with all that description. So it, it's fun. It's a, it's, it's a dicey it's, age, but it's very relevant. The movie, like you said, the, her friends, the characters, her little friend posse and everything, very, yes. very relevant. And I think kids can really relate to it. I agree. I totally agree. So what's the next movie you got going? All right. Well, we're going to switch gears here. Okay. And next up we have Licorice Pizza. This is the newest film by director Paul Thomas Anderson, who you might know for titles like Boogie Nights, Magnolia, Punch Drunk Love, and There Will Be Blood. So if you have seen any of these movies that I just listed, you know that Anderson is a master at kind of intimately and intuitively capturing the look and a genuine feel of time and place. So if you were alive in the 70s, especially if you were a teenager in the 70s, 
licorice pizza will take you right back there. So like Young Love Itself, licorice pizza is this kind of strange and spontaneous and winding story of Alana and Gary. It's a nostalgic look at youth and unconventional romance, but it is perfectly set against the backdrop of California 1973. The movie is full of crazy cameo appearances by actors like Bradley Cooper, uh, Tom Waits, Sean Penn, it's also the debut performances of Cooper Hoffman, who is the son of actor Philip Seymour Hoffman, and Alana Haim. And she's best known as a singer-songwriter for an indie band called Haim. So what at first in this movie kind of seems like an inconsistent storyline, somehow trying to tie together these fantastically done individual elements of sound and set and acting, it sort of become, it starts to reveal itself as the epitome actually of a story like this because it's kind of an intentional directionlessness that helps convey that unchartered, let's just see where this goes kind of feel of young love and relationships. So it doesn't have any agenda beyond itself. Uh, I like the way somebody called it a little snow globe of a moment in time. And it's certainly that. And it's made all the better by a wonderful soundtrack, which, by the way, you can hear streaming on Hoopla. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay, so we're going to shift gears again completely to the Batman. Much anticipated. Uh, in this latest incarnation from the DC franchise, the brooding Batman is aptly played by Robert Pattinson of Twilight fame. Uh, it features a star-studded cast. It has John Turturro, Colin Farrell, Peter Sarsgaard, Paul Dano, Andy Serkis, Zoe Kravitz is loaded with people, faces, and names, but you might not recognize them make sure you get a very big bowl of popcorn for this and be prepared to strap in because it clocks in at three full hours. Not kidding, three full hours, but it's worth the investment. And like a lot of other movies in this genre, you don't have to have seen prior movies to understand what's going on. And it's yet another new perspective on a classic superhero. So yes, the Batman has the same visually dark and seedy underbelly Gotham City style element that we've grown accustomed to, but with a super intriguing spin on some of the villains in the Batman universe and guaranteed you have not seen them this way before. So an interesting thing about the DC movies is that Unlike Marvel movies, which have a tendency to be a little more clear-cut good guy versus bad guy, the DC franchise seems to enjoy blurring the lines just a little bit. They take a kind of a deeper, more psychological or slanted look at characters as real people and their stories and their flaws and their goals. And the Batman takes an interesting route toward this well-worn story. So this one is rated PG-13, but maybe take that with a grain of salt because it has all the action and I see Dominique nodding, yes. Yeah. It has all the action and the explosions of your superhero movies, but somehow it's just a little grittier. So almost kind of Tarantino-ish in style. Think kind of 2005 Sin City light. Uh, so that's it for me. Um, but don't forget that these three movies, which are new at the library, are just three of a ton of movies that are new to the library every month. And you can get them in the media banks. There are some that go straight to the shelves. And there are also lots that are streaming on all the digital platforms. So there is truly something for everybody. Perfect. Wonderful. And the Twilight actor actually pulled off being the he best. It off. I, I was a little skeptical because I'm like, okay, I don't see, I just see him as Twilight guy. And that's all, but he did good. He did. He did. He's job. Batman guy in this. He's a Batman guy. So he, you know, he didn't do the weird voice or anything. He, he <laughs> went very smooth. So, you know, bravo to uh, the Twilight actor. 
but thank you so much, Tracy. And we'll make sure again, we'll comment all of these wonderful um, items that uh, was mentioned in today's episode um, in the comments below. And you can uh, click the link and go directly to what we mentioned to you and uh, place that hold. Um, and come on in and pay us a visit and you know, grab your items and enjoy. So I wanna thank all three of my wonderful guests for returning again and helping me out and uh, sharing all these wonderful things. I wanna thank our viewers for tuning in to another episode and that completes it for today. Until next time for our next GBTV Live. I can't talk for some reason, but that's okay, we're live. So again, thank you everyone for tuning in and I am your hostess Dominique and you guys have a wonderful day and this is Just In. Have a good one.